past fatal heart impact past painful starts in fact i blast tasteful thoughts and past i back up my actions fact don't ask grab reactions jack attack with every word and act with class as they hear me snap i got nothing to lose because i fought and felt the bruise now i'm not the one confused call the shots and they produce i ain't lost i'm finally loose pick a new so bird's juice i need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used everybody wants a piece now y'all can rest in peace now you're dead to me so peace out remember you're discreet now. get ready for we will start with a young man. He has gotten off of a plane and is at the airport. Him in a finely dressed suit. As he does walk outside with his suitcase. Him then actually looking inside of his jacket, pulling out a piece of paper and reading it. A few things are written down. Three license plates, plate numbers and a photograph of a face. Midoriya actually, Midoriya take notice to this, as he does actually look around a bit more, finding the vehicle that has one of these license plates, knocking on the glass window, as it gets rolled down. Midoriya sings a very specialized phrase, in Russian, as he then climbs into the back seat, and gets brought to the Continental Hotel in Los Angeles. Now, as it does happen, Midoriya, he then arrives at the Continental before he does walk into the hotel. Many people trying to look at who just walked into the door. As is Zuko Midoriya, his latest hit man assignment. He is going to be killing somebody of great importance within this city. Now, Midoriya does walk over and get checked in, as he does actually reach into his pocket and pull out a few coins, setting them down on the table and sliding them over, saying that he would like one room for the night and that he would like it if someone were to take his bags up to his room for him, setting down another third coin. Now, the person does actually nod, and Midoriya simply just walks away, heading for the armory. Now, as Midoriya does walk into this large room, he immediately knows which weapons he's picking, and he does walk over to the man, as he does point out that he's going to be taking that one, that one, that one, that one, and then that large weapon over there, along with him actually walking over and reaching down into a box, as he does actually pick up something that might be important, saying that he would also like to take the entire crate of this weapon. The man explained that those are military hardware, and that is he really too sure he can afford all of this. Midoriya turning and tossing a bag at him, or a small envelope, him catching it and feeling a mighty fine weight to it, opening it up and pouring it onto the table. His eyes went widening, saying that this will do just fine, will there be anything else? Midoriya asking the man if he does know whenever, well, a vehicle shop nearby will be open. His car right now is going to be taking some time to get into the city. And he's going to need some wheels. The man telling Midoriya that he does have a bike that he might be able to use. However, it is very old. And he doesn't believe that Midoriya would be able to. Midoriya pulling out a few more coins and setting them down. As the man reaches into his pocket and just grabs the keys, handing them over to Midoriya. Midoriya politely thanking the man as he does walk out, with all these weapons in tow. Midoriya with the bag draped over his shoulder goes to his hotel room, where he does actually walk in and sit down quickly just lying back and onto the bed. Think about how that was a very long flight. 
He's been doing a lot of missions right now. And he still does need to get back to the facility to actually do some training. Ah. <sighs> Shit. I get brought up with all these contracts and now look at where I am. Now. Izuka Midori at the age of 14. He's been through quite a lot more training. After the incident at the facility where people ambushed and attempted to take down Midoriya or knock him down a peg, a lot of things began to happen. Eventually, security footage was recovered of the incidents, and Midoriya was able to be proven innocent, being transferred to an actual hospital room instead of a jail cell, disguised as one. No. Midoriya also did notice that a lot of people did change their tune towards him. Midoriya, not only did he take down technically four people with quirks, he was able to take down a person with a quirk specifically for combat. And he basically killed the Shining Knight. Or at least, a man in armor. People were giving him multiple nicknames. And then there's people currently talking about how Midoriya beat somebody into a coma. And Midoriya is just sitting down, eating his food, two months after recovering. As he does actually go to stand, getting up and turning around. And as soon as he does get up and begin to start walking, somebody bumps into him. Midoriya's Trash spilling onto the floor, along with him dropping his tray. The person turning into Midoriya to watch his own before realizing who he is. And someone getting fearful of Midoriya. Bending down to immediately start picking up his things, as Midoriya does the same. The person then getting a bit more nervous. Midoriya noticing all of this. Their hands are twitchy and shaky. And the two do begin a small conversation. Before the boy quickly runs off. And away from Midoriya. Now. After that. Midoriya did begin more and more of his training. Catching back up. And it being proven that Midoriya might be a very good candidate. He's been able to keep up after recovering and show some slight improvements. Now, he does lack in some physical areas, but that can be fixed soon. And we do have Isla Carter. Or, let us say that she is called by her boogie man name, Baba Yaga, who is currently talking with a whole host of people. Her actually explaining the situation. That the students here at the facility are still somewhat very green. They all do have training, yes, and they're considered not to be amateurs. However, they do need to let them go on their own missions. Stating that to prove that this will be necessary or at least good, she would like to send her son on a mission himself. Now, this was actually somewhat debated, and people were having arguments. However, they did eventually come to a few conclusions. If they are to send one candidate at a time on an assignment, then most likely there could be a margin for failure. So, there was also a bit of a vet started. The director explained that in order to solve their little conundrum, this is what is going to be happening. Two candidates can compete for the same bounty, or assassination mission. However, they will have to use different calibers of weapon. And if that is to go down, then everything can go swimmingly. And he actually does say that Miss Carter's candidate, her son Izuku Carter, can't go up against somebody else asking if someone wants to challenge Baba Yaga. Now, 
nobody would really step into the challenge. And the director? He actually does bring his hands up onto the table, saying that once again he is asking for somebody to volunteer. Otherwise, he is going to start picking some people at random. No one will get their desired opponent, and he will make sure of it. Now, a woman acts as stand up, stating that she will put her candidate against her then, if that is the case. Her then looking over at Miss Carter, and stating that her son Izuku is quirkless, correct? Hmm. Why, yes, he is. Why exactly does that matter? Hmm. So he is just like you. Are you sure he isn't biologically related? No. He's from Japan, and I have the papers to prove it. I adopted him, and he changed his last name. In fact, my candidate and me have more things in common than I sometimes realize. I see a lot of myself in him. Hmm. Is Baba Yaga getting soft? Oh, please. You know my reputation. You know the things I have done. If you've seen some of the things he's done, you'll realize that he's a lot more brutal than I am. I've seen the surveillance footage. It's nothing great or grand. Besides, exactly what do you have him doing? Now, Midori actually does wake up some time later. And he does actually go to check the time. Now, Midori does actually stand up and go to walk out of his hotel room. As he does begin to leave, taking the motorcycle in the bag, Midori slipping goggles over his face and getting ready as he does actually put on the motorcycle helmet, along with throwing on a jacket to cover up his suit. Midoriya then actually implementing his weapons, as he actually does look at the guns he's picked. A specialized model gun. It does have some good distance and some moderate damage, you could say. Midoriya picked a .45 handgun with an extended barrel and a suppressor on it. Midoriya does actually also like the gun, as it does also possess a hollow, well, a holographic sight. And Midoriya, he's even put a laser dot on it. Now, Midoriya has it underneath the barrel, as if he were to put it on the side or the top of the gun, it could also become a very bad problem. Now, Midoriya, he actually does slip these guns into the jacket he's, he has or possesses, slipping them into specialized slots that he can tie them to. And if he needs to, he can pull away at the guns and draw them. Along with that, Midoriya also does actually look at these discs that he does have, beginning to open up a pouch from his pants and slip them into his pockets. Midori is wearing a different type of outfit, and he's changed out of his suit. He does need to look a bit more, less professional for this. Now, these strange discs, Midori does still possess, as he fills both sides of his pockets with them, before actually pulling his phone, and sending a text message, as he actually does drive off. Now, Midori does eventually get a text back, as he does stop at a red light and pull his phone, looking at it and actually texting back, as he does actually continue to drive once the light turns green. Now, Midori's target is going to be a particular person, or persons, a small little group of people. They have all been researching and developing something that could become a problem in the far future. Their research has been deemed somewhat problematic. 
as Midori is still driving. And he does eventually arrive at the spot he's supposed to. Now, he does actually drive his bike up onto the curb and sidewalk and throw down the kickstand. Midoriya quickly scanning the vehicle once again and looking to see if everything is properly in place. Now, as soon as that does actually happen, Midoriya does go to turn around and walk to the building. Now, as this does actually happen, Midoriya does walk inside. And there actually is a whole lot of people here. And Midoriya, he does actually see exactly how many. Quickly pulling a head count of the room. He was told that roughly about 80 to 150 people were supposed to be here tonight. This event. It is quite literally profiting off of the suffering of everyone else. And these people, they have been committing inhuman acts. They've been testing and using untraceable medicine and research, trying to collect data off of different quarks. And once they've collected that data, they begin to manufacture hero designs, or what you can call it, is quark specialized equipment. If your quark were to, let's say, hinder you in one way, they would create something that would be able to help you. If your eyes were to have been, well, if your eye sockets, basically, if your eyes were sticking out of your head 15 feet, they would be able to create a device that would be able to help you keep your eyes in your sockets. And do similar things. Basically, help you in your daily life since a lot of people's useless or meaningless quirks do actually get in their way. Now, Midoriya does eventually find out that after an hour, he's done his count properly. And he does actually get to work, heading to a security office, and quickly pulling a pistol, firing off five shots, one shot going through a man's neck and killing him. Another man turning to attack, Midoriya firing three shots in his body, as he falls and hits the ground. Now, the men in the security office do try and fight Midoriya. However, he quickly takes them all out. Before, he actually does walk around the building, disabling security cameras and many other things, as he does actually use the small disc in his pockets walking around and inspecting the walls, bringing his hand up and putting this disc on it, before walking around and doing the same thing. Midori eventually heading down to the floor everyone is currently on, as he places more and more of these strange devices on the walls, no one really batting an eye at Midoriya, until he actually does go over to an emergency exit, and brings something out of his left pocket, putting it on the wall. Now, Midoriya basically seals the entrances, and he does actually do one single thing. Bring out his phone, he begins to record the area, and show that all the targets are in the room, before turning around and walking away, stepping outside, as Midoriya then does one single thing. He, his right hand comes in a frame, along with a small detonator, as Midoriya presses down on it, and the building goes up in flames, and explodes. The camera quickly turning, and showing Midoriya, the helmet still on his face and most of his body and skin covered, as he does actually hold up a single paper. It shows today's date and that the people within that building just were able to counter a lawsuit against them. As Midoriya then drops the paper and brings something out of his pocket. Something that talks about a miss missing persons report. 
and the person's name and their face, as the video would cut off there. Midoriya putting his phone in his pocket and walking back over to the motorcycle, as Midoriya does actually get on and begin to rev up the engine. Now, a pro hero actually did look at Midori whenever they did run up to see what was going on, and they asked him to stop and answer a few questions. Midori turning quickly at, to look at them as he does actually take off, and begin to speed away. The hero trying to get a pursuit. Now, as it does actually happen, Midori does actually drive, and begin to run some red lights as more pro heroes and the police do eventually find out what is going on. And Midoriya, he does actually continue to drive, getting on the highway, as he does actually begin to flirt heavily. And his bike does actually go up, Midoriya ha having to hold on to it a lot tighter, as he is currently wheeling down the highway, a lot of people in cars staring at him. As Midoriya, he does fly by. Now, with all this going on, police quickly begin a pursuit, and even helicopters are coming after him. Now, let's say that a pro hero who can enhance technology, or at least is a vehicle based hero, is actually on a motorcycle themselves, and they're currently speeding down the highway to try and catch up to Midoriya. As Midoriya, he actually does look in the mirror of the bike, and see the pro hero coming. Midoriya reaching down into his left pocket and grabbing one of these metallic discs, and pulling it out, looking to see that he does actually have five of them left. So, this should be able to work. It worked in the security office, and let's see. Hmm, I wonder. Military grade hardware. A pocket EMP. Useful. Midori actually slowing down, as the pro hero was directly next to him. Midoriya basically flying backwards, and revving the engine more. Him on their left, as Midoriya does actually swing backwards and go onto the right. Midoriya being able to slam down this metal disc behind their bike, or at least out of their point of view as the pro hero actually does bring up the right hand to try and engage in combat. And Midoriya, he just pulls his bike away more as they try and grab out toward him. Him bring up his left hand, and the pro hero confused, as Midoriya activates a small device. It basically shocking his bike and killing it, the pro hero being to slow down, as Midoriya takes the right turn, and begins to go down a different highway. Now, we actually do have a police roadblock, and them basically is talking to Midoriya as he does actually begin to speed, it, speed in. Police loudly announce that Midoriya needs to stop driving, or that this mysterious man needs to stop driving as Midoriya does actually come by. Him having to slow down the vehicle, and look at all of them. Now, Midoriya he actually does bring the vehicle down to a halt, as he does look at all of them. And the police bring up their weapons, informing Midoriya that he is in violation of the law, and that he does need to comply. As Midoriya reaches his hands down into his right pockets, and pull out more and more of his disc. Now, Midori actually does feel around, if he'd have to guess 5 or 15. So, let's see. I don't want to kill, but I might have to here. <sighs> Collateral damage is never good for the pay. Hmm. I got four of the electric disc left. So, as Midori actually does pull up both of his hands. And the police do see these strange discs, informing him to put them down and take the keys out of the ignition of his vehicle. 
as Midoriya does actually throw the disc. Now, the police begin to open fire, as the disc fly and land on some cars, and others land on the ground. Police, confused as they do, try and turn to get away. Midoriya pressing down on both buttons, and the roadblock explodes and fries certain cars, along with the helicopter being affected directly overhead. Now, the helicopter also actually does begin to come down, and Midoriya does begin to speed away, driving through the destroyed roadblock as a lot of officers do actually look at him. And Midoriya, he actually does pass by and look at one. Them staring directly at Midoriya as they actually do see a gun tucked away in his jackets. Midoriya quickly begins to speed off, as officers do train take shots off at him, attempting to hit his tire. Now, you also do have another cop, the cop who is in the helicopter. Them actually taking their rifle and getting an aim, trying to line up their sight for Midoriya. And they actually fire off a shot as it begins to whisk throughout the air. Now, they were trying to aim for Midoriya's tire. However, the wind is blowing slightly up to the right. And this bullet actually has whisk it through and scraped by Midoriya's bicep. Him actually wincing in pain and feeling that. As he just continues to drive, eventually being being able to get into a small tunnel, somewhere far away, before actually just taking off the jacket and inspecting his arm. Now, the bullet didn't go into his arm. The suit he wore, or the bulletproof Kevlar suit, did actually prevent it from getting in. However, Midori was basically hit by a sandbag in the back of his bicep. And the spot actually is very purple and looks very irritated. As Midori actually does feel around. And he then does one simple thing. He takes off the bike helmet, places it on the motorcycle, and takes off the jacket. Taking his weapons out of the pockets as he just sets them down. Throwing the, throwing the jacket onto the bike. Before quickly just doing one thing. He just places down one of the more explosives. And he then actually does make a call. Talking to the person at the other end of the line and telling them his exact location. And Midoriya, he then does walk out of the tunnel. Picking his weapons back up and leaving. Whenever the vehicle does arrive, Midoriya does do one thing. He presses the detonator once more, and a final explosion is heard on this street. As one of the police do investigate it, they do find the motorcycle and a mostly destroyed bike helmet, along with the remains of some article of clothing, or possibly, well, they could be trash. Police are very uncertain. However, the remaining numbers on the license plate that they could find do you somewhat match up with what a pro hero said they saw. So it can only be assumed that the person who did do this terrorist act is still at large. Now, with that, Bidoway does deliver his data or the video he took to the people who did want it from Midoriya as proof. Now, after that did actually happen, Midoriya went back to a continental and get looked at by a doctor. Them telling Midoriya that he got very lucky. They don't believe that it broke any bone, but possibly it could still be hurt or injured, and that he should still take some time off on it. Now, Midoriya does actually thank the doctor as he does go to stand. And he does put back on his shirt, buttoning it up quickly. And he does walk over to a reception desk, a place where he can pick up his payment. As the person actually does ask for Midoriya's contracts. 
Minoria pulling out of his pocket and putting it down and sliding it over. And this person does actually look on in a bit of amazement, asking Midoriya to please hold on. As they make a phone call, asking if this amount is correct. And a few minutes to pass until Midoriya is handed two briefcases full of gold. Now, Midoriya does actually ask if he can take this over to the bank. And the woman, she does actually explain to Midoriya that right now the bank's closed. And that's most likely tomorrow morning, he can as soon as it opens. Explaining to him that it opens at around 5.30. And that the people who do manage over there would actually need his information of his, of his existing account. Midoriya thanking the woman as he does actually pick up the briefcases and leave. Now, Midoriya's current mission. He just exterminated an entire room of CEOs of various companies that were dirty down to their core. And Midoriya's payment for this task was $20 million. And Midoriya, he did do it somewhat dirty. So he wasn't paid the full amount of $25 million. Now, Midoriya does head to the bank the next morning and drop off his money, talking to the man for a brief, brief few minutes. And him and the man do have a small understanding. Now, Midoriya, he does actually begin to head home, hopping on a plane and heading back for Japan. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed, and have an amazing night. I will catch you guys in the next part.